Hi guys, um, welcome back to what? Scale Mortar. Welcome so, back to Scale Mortar. Shh. So today we are ah, going today, to be. To, we are. Shh. Let's try that again. Welcome back to Scale Mortar. Oh my goodness. Hi guys, and um, welcome back to Scale Motor. This is take two of this intro because I recorded this intro and an outro, sat here on my laptop, edited it, saved it, took photos, put photos on and everything. And then, uh, then I went downstairs to the PC downstairs, plugged in to the PC downstairs to export. And the files for this intro and the photos had disappeared. Enraged, I come back upstairs to my laptop, plug my external hard drive into my laptop. And they were there. They were there. And then I come back downstairs. I was like, oh, that was strange. Plugged it back in to the PC. They were gone again. Come back up to the laptop. I thought I'll take the laptop down. Took the laptop down. Plugged my external hard drive into my laptop. This one. And they were gone. Dip, dip, dip. Dip. So yeah, this is take two. But um Hello and <laughs> welcome back to Scale Motor. We are Starting another build today. Um, we're doing the Italeri Volvo 760 GLE. Um, yeah, not a bad kit. Um, bit lacking in detail. Uh, yeah. but oh well. Um, it's going to be a bit of a junker. Um, I'm going to be using this in conjunction with the Aoshima Brian James trailer. Um. And this is going to pull the trailer. Um, may probably end up doing a bit of a dio as well. Um, I'll see if I can dig out the footage, the dio I started for the Buick, um, because that's what I'm going to use. And the thing is, um, I'm going to be using a lot of the same techniques as I used in the Buick video on. Uh, on this and the Buick build rather um, and the reason I'm not just getting the Buick one out there is because I had 17 odd hours with the footage almost 20 hours I think actually which I edited down to enough for like two videos and it didn't save I think this might be my issue I think this might be getting past this sell by date um, it's a SSD though so it should be fine Anyway, we'll uh, we'll have a look. Um, might end up formatting it or something, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, and I thought you know what, I'm going to be using a lot of the same techniques. And looking back at the the Buick footage, I didn't really have the build in mind. I wasn't going to um, I was going to video build it. I wanted to record it just in case. I was going to put it out as a video series. Um, but I had that in my mind the whole way through, so there are some parts I didn't cover as great as maybe I should have. So the next video for the Volvo is going to be based solely on weathering, and I'm going to pay more attention to the fact that it, it is a video build. Um, so I'm going to go a bit more in depth and tell you why I'm doing it and what I'm doing. So, yeah. Um, and then later on, the book will still be a video, but I might just try and cram it all into one video to say, these are the techniques I used on this build, on this build. Ta-da! We'll see. Anyway. But yeah, for now, it's the Volvo. Um, I would like to say thank you guys so much. We're over that 1,000 subscriber mark by at least 50, almost 50%. Now. So we smashed that. Thank you. And we also smashed our 4,000 watch hours we're up over 5,000 now which is excellent so I was able to um, monetize the videos which is why you are seeing ads and um, I do apologize but the ads are there and it's um, I'm not trying to make this a career I'm not going to try and make this a full-time job I'm not gonna you know I just 
I think it'd be good to get some back because I do put a lot of effort into the videos and the builds. Um, and that time is time which could be spent doing other things like designing and printing 3D things so I can sell the files on cults 3D or I can sell the actual prints. Um, yeah, so I'm not like hoping to make millions and millions. I'm just hoping that um, maybe every couple of months I can I can amass enough um, money from ad revenue to buy a kit, um, which I can then build for you guys um, on the channel. So yeah, it, it it's it's just to try and get something from it um, as as you know as uh, as bad as that sounds but to also give back to it um yeah and which it's gonna take it as it comes and um of course if you do want to help me get to that level when i can afford to get a new kit for the channel then i do have a buy me a coffee and the link is down in the description no obligation um i'm not expecting anything um i always I forget it's there uh, i do um but uh, but yeah, if you did want to contribute in any way, that would be amazing. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, but uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. But we're going to jump in now. So jumping in, we are starting with a bit of bare metal foil. Uh, this is a technique which I used on the GNX. Um, on the on the Baywick GNX on the um, on the hood, there is uh, there's writing on the side of the scoops on the hood. So I used this technique, which I can't remember where I saw it, but I thought I'd give it a go. We're going to try it again on here. So all we're doing is we're getting a little bit of bare metal foil. Um, and I've, I've been having issues with this packet of bare metal foil. Um, so I've been told to try and hit it with a heat gun. Um, and it, it makes it stick better. And it does really seem to work. So if you are having issues with bare metal foil, give it a bit of a heat gun before you start uh, once it's down and where you need it to be, and then start cutting away. So... All I'm doing is putting this on the raised valve or right in on the um, on the the wings on the side, pushing it down nicely, and then we're uh, coming in with uh, with a blade and we're going to cut as close as we can to those letters. We don't want much bare metal foil left over. This is um, this is because we, we may end up seeing it through the paint, which would be rather annoying. So we're just going to cut it as close as possible. You don't have to cut around each and every letter because you, you, you're not really going to see it in between each and every letter. The only kind of area you'll see like a demarcation or anything would be around the outside, which is why I say cut it as close as you can. I'm just giving it a push down to make sure it's all conformed. And you see it's all conformed around the letters and we've done it on both sides marvelous uh we treated the the grill on the front to the same kind of um the same treatment um at this stage i still wasn't certain if i was going to go you know perfect with the car or if i was going to go the the ruined route um, but we obviously we decided on the ruined route in the end. Um, but anyway, yeah. So um, done exactly the same here. Pushed it all down and then cut off any of the excess. And we also cut in between each part of the grill. Um, just so like once the the paint goes on over the top, it'll sit in each kind of. Uh, dip in the grill rather than just like on top just cut off any excess from the side um yeah i think what ended up happening with this was a bit of a happy accident anyway um but then at this point i was um i was thinking you know what there's not many parts of this kit left um i've done the body and everything um and i thought you know what i'm just gonna get it all mounted get it all painted every single piece every single part and as you'll see in this video there's actually not much to this kit thankfully um so yeah i decided to uh, to paint it all
Okay, and then after that, we moved on to paint. So prime in first. We are prime in with Mr. Surfer 1500 Black. Um, it took me a while to kind of decide what colour I was going to go for, but in the end, you'll see the colour we went for now. Um, so first pass with the primer, just trying to get all the kind of annoying bits, which may be easy to forget. Um, so kind of underneath of bits like that, the um, the wheel arches, the bottom of the um, side skirts and the fenders, and uh, as you can see there, the tops of the, the windows and inside the wings. Um, we're also going to try and get the inside painted up just so there's a little bit of colour in there. Or um, instead, so we just haven't got bare plastic just everywhere. Uh, so yeah, um, just first pass, try and get all those annoying parts. Then the second pass, a little bit thicker. Um, this, this, this paint covers really, really well. So it looks like I'm putting on a ton. But I'm not. Um, we ended up with three coats of this. It's thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Um, I don't know by how much. About 60-40, I think, thinner to uh, to paint ratio. Uh, it's not Mr. Leveling, Leveling Thinner, sorry. It is Mr. Rapid Thinner. Rapid Thinner. Um, I still haven't purchased any Leveling Thinner because I'm a melon and I keep on forgetting. And like I said, we went round and we primed absolutely every single part of the model. Um, this includes the interior, the chassis, the engine, any other little bits and bobs and ancillaries. Uh, the only thing that isn't actually painted now when it's all sitting on the bench in front of me here is the window, because that would be silly, and the, the lights, the front, rear, and... Uh, side lights side lights yes side lights so uh yeah uh that's that's probably going to be uh a quick little two minute thing um but it was all primed in one sitting and all primed with mr surfacer as you can see we done the chassis too which is all one piece and um, we've done the same kind of thing as we did on the body just make sure we get all the little nooks and crannies first before carrying on Exhaust, again, one piece. Uh, I was quite thankful that there was not much flash or anything on this exhaust, so that was pretty good. There wasn't much flash to speak of on the kit in general. Um, we also repainted the wheels. I couldn't be bothered to strip the chrome because I just wanted to paint. So we went straight in with the um, <clears throat> Mr. Surfacer, um, uh, the Mr. Surfacer 1500 black, and again, just uh, when painting wheels and, and alloys just try and make sure you get in all those little nooks and crannies and the crevices and creases and, and whatnot because uh it can be a little annoying sometimes and you've also got to try and be rather consistent there we go and there is the interior as i said i am not lying we did paint pretty much everything and we followed the same kind of routine i i painted the parts which look like they could easily be forgotten or missed first just to make sure we've got that covered down and then uh, and then fill in the gaps pretty much there's a uh, there's some molded in carpet and it's a little crap <laughs> um i'm not gonna lie it's not great um it looks like wire wool um but yeah uh, we're gonna we're gonna add some dust and stuff to that, so that's not gonna be a problem. So then we have LP sixty three, which is titanium gold. I believe it's LP sixty three. I've got it next to me. It just flashed up on the screen, but I was talking about something else. Anyway, titanium gold by Tamia, thinned again with Mr. Rabbit thinner, and we're following the same technique. I decided on this because it's kind of like a champagne -y, goldy color, and it's I don't know. It reminds me of an older car for some reason. Um, so yeah, this is what we went for. I'm using the 0.2mm Apex because I'm I'm, I'm a fool. Uh, probably should have used the 0.3. It would have covered a lot easier than this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to slowly build it up. So we're going in one direction um, pretty much <clears throat> over the whole model. Hit the sides first. I generally do. Well, first I do like the primer and get like all the annoying bits. Then I hit the sides and I go over the top from the back obviously the bonnet isn't on here but the bonnet was painted also 
Um, at this point, I'm not trying to get it that consistent. I'm just trying to get a bit of coverage. And I had decided by this point that it was going to be a bit of a junker, so I wasn't too bothered about how perfect the paint turned out, um, which is why in the end I didn't even bother clear coating it either. But the second pass, you can see we are alternating the direction um, just to kind of give us more of a chance to cover. Um, and again, we are then kind of finishing off the pass with a bit of a, a, a wet dusting, shall we say? Uh, but we're not hosing it on, we're not going too thick. And then you can see we've got the uh, the bonnet too. A, a, a great thing I think about siding to do a bit of a junker um, or um, a ruined car or something is you don't have to be perfect at this point. Um, and I am thoroughly enjoying it. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the GNX. I enjoy. I've been, I'm enjoying this. Um, I didn't do weathering on on the, the bike previously. Um, maybe a bit of panel line wash, but uh, but yeah, nothing as uh, as I'm doing to this. Um, but yeah, I do quite enjoy it. It takes a bit of the pressure off. Um, that's not to say every single one of my builds are going to be rusty, rotten, falling apart cars and bikes. Don't worry, I do have a plan to do a bit of a rat bike as well. Um, but yeah, it does take a bit of the pressure off. But that was our third coat. We ended up with three coats. And there you go, you can see point two. Um, we're using Alclad. Uh, I believe that was aluminium. Again, I'm a pleb and I was talking about something else. But you would have seen. You would have seen if you were paying attention. Were you paying attention? Anyway, um, we're just going to be painting a lot of the, the metal bits in this Alclad aluminium. Uh, point two needle with Alclad, unthinned, uh, straight out of the bottle, and uh, I've tightened the trigger tension on the um, on the airbrush, and I'm just laying it down nice and slow. Again, I knew this was going to be weathered to the moon and back, so I wasn't too bothered about getting that perfect finish. Um, these are the excellent brake discs. Yeah, I know. Um, I didn't really look too hard into the instructions uh, to see exactly what part was what. Um, I knew it was the brake disc, obviously, but I, I didn't know which way round it went. I didn't know what it connected to. I don't know if it was going to be seen afterwards. So <clears throat> I just sprayed it all silver. And if I need to paint the calipers, I will paint the calipers with a brush separately. Uh, I will need to paint the calipers. I, I don't know why I'm saying if. I will need to. <laughs> and the same colour was done for the wheels. Um, I actually quite like these alloys. They're, they're quite cool. Um, yeah, they're not bad. Um, I have got a weird taste in wheels, though, so that's... Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Um, anyway, once all our paint was dry, we came in with a cotton bud. And we dipped the tip of our cotton bud in uh, some lacquer thinner. And then we very, very gently rubbed over the top of our letters where we put the bare metal foil. And this will make the bare metal foil shine through. And, <clears throat> pardon me, if you're slow enough and gentle enough, you're not going to pull off any paint around it. And it'll look just like, um, just like badges and, uh, and, and raised lettering, silver lettering. Um, Again, I can't remember where I saw that tip, but it, 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 it that's all, folks. But it works quite well. Um, yeah, so after that, then, I decided I wanted to do a door a different colour. Because, um, well, that happens, doesn't it? It does happen, yeah. You see all the cards with different coloured doors because they just got whatever door they had of the scrappy or ordered one. Um... But yeah, what we've done is we masked off this. It, it took me a while to decide which door, but <clears throat> I decided that it was going to be this door because, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm thinking that previously in the car's life, it was owned by maybe a family, and one of the kids was very clumsy and opened the door into oncoming traffic, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they, they didn't have central lock. That central lock in. Uh, yeah, central lock in. Maybe the the child lock was off. I don't know. Anyway, we decided on this door because I decided it wasn't going to be the driver who ruined it. Um, it was going to be a passenger. 
So then we can pass all the blame onto somebody else. <clears throat> anyway, um, so we just kind of covered the the door jams and everything with um, door jams. <laughs> Christ, what am I talking about? We just covered <clears throat> the seam lines for the door with masking tape, and then we used a sharp blade to cut it out. And then we also used that pointed cotton bud, which you can see there, just to poke it into the panel line, just to make sure it was seated. And we don't get much, if any, paint on the kind of inside of the panel line, on the side of the panel line that's not the door panel. Yes. Yes, words and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to get this door painted. So just uh, masked off like a, added a bit more and then I decided to go for Hull Red. Um, <clears throat> XF9 by Tamiya. Really, really nice colour. And at first it was because this was going to be a rusted out door. Um, but then I kind of thought, well, why would they change the original door for that? Um, and then I thought, well, there's a kind of mahogany, kind of metallic -y mahogany colour um, door anyway. But now, actually, I think I might go back to the rust look. We'll see. We will see. I don't know. We'll find out in the next video. Um, yeah, that's what, so that's what I like about these builds. Um, a build like this doesn't have to be perfect and you can change as you go. Um, <clears throat> I'm already having other ideas, but similar ideas, so yeah, it's quite a fun process just to see what, what you end up with. Um, and yeah, I'm really uh, really looking forward to see what I end up with. But there we go, there's our door. We also then use that hull red to add um, just patchy bits over most of the metal parts, just for a kind of base for our rust which is going to be coming um later on um so yeah this part does not have to be perfect at all you can do as much or as little as you like um this is all you play it by your eye do it how you want to do um and then bits like this i sprayed from rather far away um <clears throat> just to get speckly kind of uh rust on it um and as you can see i painted those bits um in, in silver. Didn't bother masking them off because uh, I'm going to hide the crimes, as Adam Savage would say, with uh, with a bit of weathering. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, there's that. Um, the hull red is a nice kind of deep kind of rust colour. Um, and it also makes a nice colour for the door, as you can see. Uh, it was by this point that I decided, after discussion in the Hangouts, that if um, if this door had been damaged, then there quite possibly could have been damage to the rear panel as well. <clears throat> so, I decided to slowly sand some paint off, so we could um, we'd get down to the bare plastic, um, but we'd also see the layers, so you'd see the paint, the primer, and then the plastic, um, as if kind of it's been sanded away, um, because I wanted it to look like it had been repaired, so not excellently, um, and I might, that, that, yeah, now I'm thinking that I might do on other parts of the car, get that, um, that, uh, titanium gold add a bit of white or black to it maybe just make it a slightly different color and, and put that on a wing or something just to uh give a bit of uh it looks like so it looked like that's been replaced too we'll see anyway um now what i wanted to do here is i wanted to heat up the plastic to get it slightly more malleable um then i tried poking it with metal things and then whacking these metal things with a hammer plastic cooled a bit too quick for me to do this with so I just used the ball end of a ball peen hammer um, and just whacked it uh, and the reason for this is I wanted kind of like I wanted it to look like hammer marks really um, mainly because like I said I wanted it to look like it had been repaired like it maybe been to a panel beater or something 
Um, and uh, yeah, it didn't turn out too bad. And then I thought, I'm going to put a dent in the roof. So we heated the roof from the back. Um, and then I pushed a little bit too hard. And you can see, I uh, yeah, I cracked the roof. Annoying. Very annoying. But this is going to be a junker. So I'll try and fix it with a bit of... Um, Uh, stuff and things uh, a bit of uh, Tamiya extra thin, but I'm not certain that we will be able to um, <clears throat> Then I just went round various other areas various areas of the car uh, smashing it with a hammer um, and uh, Heating parts up a bit as well before whacking them just to um, get some more dents uh, So yeah, that was actually quite quite fun quite therapeutic um, <laughs> Right, and then this part, we came back with our um, thinner on a cotton bud to wipe off the black paint, which I masked and painted off camera, um, to leave our silver grill. Um, and it was at this point, I thought, well, we'll try sanding it instead because it was taking forever because there was a couple of layers of paint on. And um, yeah, I maybe got a bit too rough and uh, some of the... Um, bare metal foil started peeling away but it looks like chrome plated plastic where the chrome plating has come off so bit of a, a secret kind of brucey bonus um, yeah I'm quite happy with how it turned out anyway even though it, it was a happy accident shall we say um, and I'm, I'm I know I've said it once or twice but I am enjoying how loosey goosey this build is going um, and how Accidents are happening, or something is changing in my head, and I'm just changing the course of the build. And yeah, that's uh, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So, um, yeah, so now now we're just building up uh, bits for the uh, the outside. I did have a little bit of an issue because I heated up that part and and I I melted the bottom a little bit, so it didn't fit perfectly. But with a bit of squeezing, we got it into place. We're using the uh, Loctite Perfect Craft Super Pen or whatever it's called. You know, look, it's right there, it's right there. The Loctite Super Glue Creative Pen. Um, to glue it on, we could have just used I could have just used the pen instead of decanting it onto the uh, the UMP kind of bottle stopper topper things we have I have there. Um, but yeah, just using a bit of that, a little dab, and again, I wasn't too worried if it kind of if I got too much and it hazed or if it left CA burns or marks because, as I said, this is not going to be perfect. And then I went ahead and used the pen as it is intended. And I've got to say, it did work a lot better. It stopped me having a, uh, a paint pot upturned with a half dry piece of CA glue on top which then stuck to my forearm and I didn't find for three hours later um, be a bit careful on this front end it is a bit of a nightmare to line up um, there's not really much in the way of connecting points for that bottom lip or the chin um, yeah so just be a bit careful if you're gonna do a nice version of this car it was at this point I realised that these bumpers are not just all black. Um, they have little bits which are body colour. And I could not be bothered to spend ages and ages masking that up. It probably wouldn't have taken ages and ages. I just didn't want to mask it up. So, because it was all together. All together would have been annoying. So I reached for the Tamiya brush um, and brush painted this little bit on the top and a bit along the bottom of both the front and the back and uh, yeah I'm quite pleased with how it came out um, you can brush paint the Tamiya LPs um, I find it easier if you load your brush up uh, get a load of paint on there and try not to go over the same part twice because it'll start, just start pulling the paint up um, just make sure there's quite a bit of paint on your brush and it should leave quite a bit of paint there and you're not going to get many streaks then we moved on to the interior and after the recent massive success massive success of the um, F15 um, 
pre-embossed and shade in, I thought, you know, I'm going to try out with the interior. So we're using the same colours. This is Light Ghost Grey by from AK. Um, and I use this to do a bit of pre-shade in. Um, yeah, it, it, it looks, looks kind of crap. Um, at this point, I knew it looked kind of crap. And I was thinking, you know what, I'll just I'll go along with it. I'll just just move to the next color, and uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. So we've done this for the rear bench seat, the two front seats. We had done a bit on the um, the dashboard and the door cards. Um, yeah, pretty much the whole interior was treated with this treatment. Um, and at this point, I I didn't I didn't like it. Um, I decided to go for that kind of, you know, that old grey plastic and grey fuzzy valve like you see in old cars. That's what I went for. Um, next up, AK Medium Grey, and this was to be the medium colour. And as I started laying it down, I realised this is a completely different colour to the light ghost grey. I didn't want to use the dark ghost grey, because the dark ghost grey was pretty much light ghost grey, and you can't really see much of a difference. Um, I could have darkened it, but I didn't want to spend too much time on it. So I ended up putting this medium grey down is pretty thick pretty much everywhere and you couldn't really see that pre shade pre highlight and I suppose that I'd done and then I decided to use gunship grey something gunship grey again AK um, it's lacquer paint all thinned with uh, this is the orange top Tamiya lacquer thinner with retarda about 60-40 with 60% uh, thinner um, and then I just decided you know what I'm going to use this as uh, as post shade in so we'll post shade instead uh, and again that did not look great so I put this on a little bit thicker in most places and uh, apart from the floor where I kind of like dusted it on because the floor just yeah it wasn't uh, I wasn't too pleased with the the texture on the floor so so yeah, everything was treated to the same kind of process, and that was uh, uh, everything for the interior. Um, yeah, and I'm not, I'm not too annoyed with how it came out. Um, I actually do quite like how it turned out. And this point, I thought I'm gonna do even more post shading because it hasn't worked so far. So let's just see if it can not work again. So I added a bit of um, what was this semi gloss black? I added a bit of semi gloss black LP5 into my grey just to get a darker grey darker gunship grey or whatever grey it was and um, and yeah um, use this to, to pour shade and this turned out marginally better than <laughs> than the previous attempts but then I realised hang on this is going to be a junker you're going to do a bit of weathering I'm not going to do ripped seats and stuff um, so yeah don't worry about it just crack on just crack on so we did we cracked on so I got my uh, my Vallejo Air rust paint set out stole one of the Mrs. sponges from the kitchen started ripping it to shreds and then working through the different colors of um, <clears throat> the rust paints uh, first of all started with Hull Red actually um, again this is a nice kind of dark basey color for rust and it, it goes down really really well so yeah we just dabbed that on and pretty much followed the exact same process on uh, on the rest of the parts <clears throat> and then we're starting with the the Vallejo colors went for the darkest the second darkest one it didn't go straight for the darkest one because we'd done um, uh, the whole red um, but yeah, we followed the same process as this. We dip in our ripped sponge in there, wipe in the majority of it off on um, on a tissue, which is off camera to the side there. And then we're just going to be dabbing in some rust um, paint bit by bit here and there. powder for a, for a texture 
Um, so now Vallejo Light Trust, and we are literally just following the same procedure. Um, it, it ended up at this point a little bit too light, I think. Um, and then I made it a bit worse by going in with the orange rust. And that just made things a little bit cartoon-like in my eyes. So I did go back in with one of the darker colours, which we started off with, just to tone it down. Yeah, here we go with the orange rust, where it goes a bit, uh, a bit cray cray. Um, okay. Um, turns out I uh, I missed a lot of that footage, unfortunately. And then <laughs> we went back with the darker color to to tone it down. We also painted the uh, the bare plastic, which we sanded to on the model earlier, silver, and we added a bit of rust to that too. And yeah, that's that's where we stopped. So you can see these. That's the interior. Again quite happy with it it's not great um the rust on the exhaust you can see there's quite a bit of weather into these parts so um we're going to be coming in with pigments and powders next so that's going to be exciting and maybe some oils um yeah i haven't really decided exactly how far i'm going to go but i will be going far and there's there's everything um it's pretty much everything in the kit that's it there's uh there's the body um you can see with dents and stuff and uh, there we go there's that uh that part i was talking about earlier there we go that is another build done and dusted um it's not another build done and dusted so there we go that is part one done and dusted um yeah 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 quite chuffed with how it's going so far um i may have gone a little bit overboard on the base of the weathering um but that's not a problem. We'll uh, we'll tackle the the weather and properly in the next video. A bit annoying that I that I broke that roof um, that we cracked. Uh, that's maybe we can cover that up with something. Um, oh, maybe I could do like a roof rack. I could design and print a roof rack. Hmm. Oh, I'm getting some thoughts and getting some ideas. Um, one thing I didn't really cover in the video, which is uh, really annoying, um, is um, this. Uh, where's my camera? This, which is a tow bar. Yeah, it's not going to focus, is it? Well, anyway, this. Let me just get that away from my face. This tow bar was um, designed and 3D printed, print, 3D printed by moi. Um, I'll, uh, I'll probably chuck a, a better photo up than me just waving it in front of the camera. Um, yeah, so that uh, that was designed and 3D printed by yours truly. Um, the file is available on my Cult 3D page if you do want to download that and print it yourself. Um, for a very small charge. Uh, I think it's about a quid. Um, but then you've got unlimited tow bars. There's, there's a couple of different uh, options. There's with that plug, the trailer plug. Uh, without the trailer plug and um, the actual tow hook, kind of the tow ball is the right way up and upside down just for different levels of trailers and heights of cars. Um, so, so yeah, there's you can switch swap. They all come with the same file anyway, so um, you can use them to suit your needs. Um, yeah, leave a link to the Cults 3D down in the description. Um, but yeah, I think our next our next video is going to be on the trailer, which I do have here, um, pretty much ready for mounting and painting. I think I'll do the whole trailer uh, without any like little weathering bits in one video, um, and it's going to be a slightly different video. Um, maybe um, just kind of make it easier on myself because sometimes it's hard getting time, uh, quiet time, to do the voiceovers and the intros and the outros. Um, what with a four-year-old, a crazy dog, and a uh, and a girlfriend, it is it is it is quite hard. And then those are the times where, like, I want to be in the hangout as well, talking with the pals, or I'm on the live show. It's uh, yeah, it's sometimes quite hard to find the the time to do the voiceovers. So I'm trying to 
try a couple of different things so I can do maybe a little bit less voiceover in. Um, but again, I don't want to keep finding music and, and, and stuff. So, but we're going to try something else with that, with that video. Um, but yeah, the full, full build for that will be in one video apart from the weathering, which will then be done probably at the exact same time as I'm doing the Volvo. It'll be a bit of a longer video because I'm weathering kind of two different, uh, two different models, but, uh, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then after that, I'll probably do a bit of, bit of dial, um, for it. And then decide what car I'm putting on the trailer for this to tow. So, so yeah, um, that's that, I suppose. Um, again, thank you so good. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, thank you. Um, don't forget to drop a like, uh, leave a comment. Um, how you think this is going so far? Anything you think you would do? Um, you know, does this inspire you to, to want to build one yourself? Maybe or do this if you've never gunked up a car before. Do you want to do, do you want to gunk up one now? Let me know. Um, yeah. So like, comment and subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss videos. They are kind of sporadic. So, um, it's best to hit the bell so you'll know when they come out then. Um, and sometimes I'm uh, a melon and I forget to share them on social media. Um, but yeah, hit the bell notifications and, um, in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day and stay safe.